Have you ever stopped to think about the fans behind a band? What is it about the music that keeps fans coming back for more? Or is there more? My name is Renee Lipsmeyer, and I am the host of this podcast, The Space Between Podcast, the podcast where we talk about the fans of the Dave Matthews Band. Each week, a fellow DMB fan joins the show to discuss their journey with the band. Welcome to the Space Between Podcast. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Space Between Podcast, the podcast where we talk about the fans of the Dave Matthews Band. So, you know, what an exciting time to be in your ears right now. However you're watching this, whether it's, po- you know, whether you're listening to it on a podcast or if you are watching this on YouTube, I'm so excited that, you, first of all, that you even chose to watch this. Thank you. Uh, second, what an exciting time to get to, to talk to you because Okay, look, let's just be, let's just start from the beginning. Uh, Tampa, then we have West Palm Beach, then we just finished up Jacksonville. I mean, everybody's the, the buzz is out. Like we can feel our hearts beating again. Like it's everything we've been waiting for. It's like the stupid, like, I don't even know what to compare it to because there's nothing else that like kind of feels this way. Maybe like football to the Super Bowl. I don't know, but this lasts way longer than that. So like how lucky are we to be you know, doing this all right now. I'm so excited that you guys have chosen to listen. So this is a special episode. There's so much excitement in all of us and there's excitement in me and in my guest. So, you know, I am bringing someone back. This is, this is the third time that he's been on the show. And every time it's, it's like the first time. (laughs) It's so good every time, man. It's so good every time. And it's fun because like I met Jason in a parking lot (laughs) in Dallas, Texas at a Dave Matthews band concert. And it was just so perfect because it wasn't planned. It was like, I am, you know, out there with my microphone talking about, cause it was 2023 talking, right. Talking about the set list because that was the opener of 2023. So like, you know, I'm out there, I'm podcasting, I'm doing my thing. And then I get done and walk into the parking lot And there's, you know, I know a few people, so I like stand around, I'm talking to them and sitting in the back of a car with a couple of guys I knew or gals, I can't even remember who was around you because like you just stuck out to me. I was like, I saw him and yes, I do this often, but I saw him and I just like went right to him and I was like, we're going to be friends. Like you don't even have a decision. Like this is what's happening. And it, and it did. And it did. So guys, I can't, I'm so excited to welcome Jason back to the show. Jason, thank you so much for coming back. My pleasure. Thanks. I feel like, uh, you know, the space between royalty. So thank you. <laughs> you are. Everyone is. I've just got a bunch of queens and kings, right? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So tell us like what in the, yes, tell us like catch us up. So the last episode that you were on was uh, the Christmas episode. That was a lot of fun. And, you know, I should say, I'm sorry to anyone that listened to me singing on that episode because it was awful. Like me playing it back, you know, because I have to edit this shit and, you know, I was super brave in that. Actually, I can't remember if that was with Andy when he was still helping the show and and hey Andy thank you so much for everything that you did but this bitch is broke so I had to be like I'm sorry I can't pay anyone to help me so I'm back to doing everything by myself but uh nevertheless uh Jason and I sang a little bit we talked about love a little bit in our Christmas episode so welcome back what a great time to come back catch us up on like what in the world have you been doing since Christmas Wow. Well, there's a lot that's happened since Christmas. Uh, the year ended, which was fantastic because it seemed to be a hell of a year for me, at least from the end of August till the end of 2023. I think it was a tough year for a lot of people, but, um, you know, I, uh, had the, the, uh, the lovely privilege to go and see the boys in Europe. What? And the boys in the Dave Matthews band, of course. Uh, what a fantastic, magical time that was. Um, I mean, there was a a moment where I had the opportunity to take a chance on something in, and when I was in Manchester at that show to give someone 
my book to give to Dave Matthews, and that's happening. So that's uh, fantastic. And for those that don't know, I wrote a children's book. It's called Hello Heaven is Poppy There. And uh, it's available on Amazon and uh, barnesandnobles.com online. And, uh, you know, I had brought the book several times to give it to him. And that was one of my main focuses in Europe was to, you know, make sure he gets it. Because it's like a little tribute to him because there's over 30 mentions of the Dave Matthews Band songs in, throughout the book, both in word and picture. And... Um, you know, it was like one of those moments where I didn't even want to bring the book to the concert because I had brought it to Dublin and it kind of like the pit was so crowded and it was kind of got like it started to get like, you know, dirty corners. And I was like, this is not a gift, you know, like, I'm, like, <laughs> yeah. I'm not bringing it. I'll bring it to Paris when there's nobody there, you right. know, and maybe he'll get it then. Yeah. But something told me to bring it. To Manchester so I brought it to Manchester long story short was able to give it to him and that like just the, the letting go into the idea that he'll even read it one day of course I put my phone number in the beginning in case you hell want. yeah you did you were like Dave call me <laughs> very subtly like <laughs> maybe not maybe just call, you, know? you uh, can text me and, uh, that's cool yeah. too <laughs> yeah but it was it was a timely because he mentioned in Dublin that a that a bass player from Dumpster Funk. He didn't mention the band, but I found out it was the bass player from Dumpster Funk had passed away. And it was like this is what my book is about. It's about to help people deal with grief and loss and death at a time when you don't really know how to talk about it, especially yeah. for parents to kids. That's why yeah. I wrote the book. It is a true story. And I wanted to throw it on the stage in Dublin, but it just it just didn't feel right. And you know, I gave it to him and then I gave it away. And then I just had an absolute magical trip to Paris. And the fans have just been the loveliest. We, I mean, I caught a, a, I caught a pick and I got a set list. I got Buddy's set list. It was, I got, was on the rail for the front show, uh, for oh the whole God. show. But Rigo, the, their photographer, took a photo of me that he sent to me, which has been fantastic. Um... Dave pointed at my sign during the show after they played What Would You Say to the point where two people that weren't even near me that know my sign go, Dave pointed at your sign as if, as if I didn't know. I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> but it, it, like, it made confirmation like, yes, yes, it happened. Because <laughs> I would be imagining it, like, it and I'd be like, it did happen. And everyone's like, no, it didn't. <laughs> yeah, it but like, it happened. It did happen. It happened. And I got a poster in Paris. That was the first poster. I did get one in Dublin, but a friend of mine liked it more and she kind of got shafted in her line. So I ended up selling it to her and, uh, you know, thank God, because I didn't feel like carrying it. To the, yeah, 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 yeah. But man, what a magical time it was in Paris. And what made the time so special was how embraced the fans were to me. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I don't know if word got to you, but I was in an accident when I first got to Europe uh, in Dublin. Tell and us, tell us more. Tell us everything. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, the the quick version is is I flew to New York. I had a little stopover, and then I flew to du to Ireland, mm -hmm. Dublin. And my plan was to plan it so I can stay up. I had to stay up when I got there, so I was trying to sleep as much as I could on the plane and this that, and the other thing. Yeah. So I was like, I put up on my first flight. So on my second flight, it was like I was dead asleep. Yeah. And everything was working according to plan. I rented this car, you know, it's on the opposite side of the car. And I'm like, this is a little weird because it's not like the steering wheel is on the left. The steering wheel is on the right side of the car, like uh -huh. where the passenger would be. Right. And on top of that, you're driving on the left side of the road. So confusing. Yeah, I can't imagine. Yeah. It, it makes the this way a lot more scary because, you you know, any inch yeah. you're ahead yeah. on collision and you're dead. Oh, my God. But, yeah. So I was driving on my way to see uh, the Cliffs of Mayor, I think it's pronounced. I'm probably butchering it, forgive me to everybody in the world. Um, and it's like a beautiful thing. You know, one of the, I don't know, maybe it's a wonder of the world to see. It's like beautiful Ireland. Yeah. And uh, I was 40 minutes away from the thing. And one thing led to another on a small little, you know, cottage road. And we ended up colliding. Luckily, everybody was safe. It took a $270 Uber to get back to some sense of civilization 
to where I can take a bus back to Dublin only to find people at the night one meetup or the night zero meetup in Dublin and like just welcome me with open arms and just say, it's okay, you're here, have a beer, you know, let's fucking dance. Wow. No, I get it. You can say whatever you, whatever the fuck you want. Thank you. It was, (laughs) it was such like, I've been traveling for 48 hours straight and besides you know being shocked after the accident for like an God, hour which it yeah was i'm so glad you're okay that's that's so scary yeah it was a little nutty especially because you know you're not used to reacting i'm not used to reacting a car that i'm on the opposite side of the car right for. right you know, right like, they moved and i moved but it was like did i move enough because i'm used to that in my car you know not in this <clears throat> rental car I was exactly in. yeah Thank my lucky stars. I took the full insurance. Oh my God. Yes. Because it was a matter of like eight Euro and I could have had to pay $500 out of my pocket first. It's a miracle. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yes. And so just, I I got back there and I dropped my bags and everyone took me like 10 minutes to get a beer because you know, that's how long it takes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I just had a sip of that Guinness and there was a guy playing, uh, guitar and I just danced and I just like, I just, I just needed to dance. And it was like, I didn't know I could dance until I was dancing and around people. And, you know, like I felt safe in like, I'm like the trips over. I have a place to stay tonight. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Just so you could relax. Finally, finally. Yeah. That dance was a, was a spectacular dance. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow. That, that's yeah. awesome. So God lot, bless. The Irish on my side that day for sure. Well, thankfully, I, I know that that did not set the pace. I mean, honestly, yeah. your trip went nothing but just up, 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 and you're still on a high from this trip. So, mm-hmm. kind of walk us through what what continues to happen on this trip. Well, you know, it's as I was trying to give Dave this book, people kept asking me what the book was or why. You know, like I would have it on the back of my sign because I didn't want it to fall on the ground. So, right. you know, I use it as for my book, my sign that I hold up at the show. And, uh, you know, the people would start asking me, what was this book about? And I told them the same spiel I'm about to tell you. I said, it's a true story about when I was nine years old and how I personally dealt with my grandfather's death uh, to help parents talk to their kids about death, dying and grief and loss to their kids when they don't know how to, you know, talk mm-hmm. about. Mm-hmm. And. There happens to be 30 different Dave Matthews song references throughout the book. Wow. Oh, see, I, mean, I love this. I love this on so many levels. A, because, man, grief is one of those things that no matter what, every single one of us is going to be faced with death. There are two things that are certain in this life. You are going to be born and you are going to die. And those are two things we cannot deny. And so learning how to cope with grief as a nurse we preach and educate about the stages of grief because it's not something you're necessarily prepared for, but it is something that you should educate yourself about because none of us know those feelings. None of us can even predict what that will feel like, but we can be, we can be understanding that, Oh, okay, here's some things I might go through. I might be angry and that's okay. So, you know, I love, I love that you wrote this. So tell us kind of some more about this book. Yeah. Um, You know, I was in the process, excuse me, uh, the coffee is saying hello. Uh, I was in the process of writing, of, you know, talking to the company that helped me write it, uh, a great company called Dinosaur House, shout out to them. What's up, Dinosaur House? Yeah, right there. Uh, That's their little logo thing. And then a shout out to the illustrator, Ana Barbosa, if that reads right. Uh, she's uh, one of their in-house artists who did all the illustrations and they're so beautiful. Um, so hey, I think what you need to say, you know, I know that uh, if you're listening to this on a podcast app, you are listening to us say, look at this, look at this, look at this. So here's how you're going to get to see those things. You go to YouTube and you type in the space between podcasts. Every single episode has a video. I bet you didn't even know that because honestly, 99% of the listeners of this show listen to it. They don't watch it, but this is an episode that you were going to need to see a, because Jason's just, he's amazing. And B you got to see this book. Like it's amazing. And I want you to be able to pick it out on when you go to Amazon to buy this book, you're going to be able to go, Oop, there it is. You know, <laughs> that's something like that song. Whoop, there it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, 
I was born in 79. That's my jam. <laughs> I was born in 76, so I got you, girl. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, you know, people kept asking, and I think that that was, you know, the way I felt embraced in Dublin is kind of how people started embracing this book as I was going on this journey. And yeah. I would just mention everything I just said to you, and they'd say, where could I get it? And I would tell right, them. Right, exactly. Yes. And they would go and buy it. And by the time I came back, I was like, how many people bought the book? 20 copies were sold out of just me trying to give Dave Matthews my book and talking about it, you know. That's the, the most amazing. And I'll tell you one thing better than Dave Matthews getting my book. There was a woman, MJ, who brought a copy of my book with her. I think it's from... New Jersey or Connecticut? I think it's New Jersey, but I want to say Connecticut. I think it's New Jersey. She bought it all the way to like Paris. I think she might have even tried to get me in another city, like multiple bars through the rain to the last bar that we ended up being at, uh, which is a story in of itself. Uh, <laughs> for me to be able to sign her book over to her grandkids. Oh my and goodness. That was such a. You know, it was funny because she I, she goes, here you are at the last bar. I finally see you and I don't have the book. I said, oh, where is it? She goes, it's at my hotel. I said, oh, where are you staying? She goes, it's the hotel across the street. I said, do you want to go get it? And I'll yeah, it. I'll be right here. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite funny. It was a fun, you know, so then in the midst of all of that joyous, you know, bliss of somebody bringing a book that far i mean that's what i did that's today. wild they were after you i mean this is what an honor what an honor mm -hmm. so in that honor we were all in the bar and as you know the olympics are coming up in a couple of weeks in oh, paris yeah. it's exciting and they had this they had this um i don't know olympics the olympic symbol there's this i don't even know what it is a wave or i don't even know <laughs> and, doing the uh, wave over in paris <laughs> yeah. So anyway, the owner of this place called the, sta uh, the beer station in Paris uh, took our photo as we're all, you know, hanging out, celebrating after the show, the greatest show that it was, uh, and takes our picture. And then someone had gifted him a sticker that said, be kind, always, no matter, and stuck it on the picture and then stuck our picture on the wall. And we're now forever in Paris. Forever. Oh, my God. That is amazing. Awesome. Now, did you take a picture of this? I know that you did, right? You've got a picture of this. Yeah, I do well, have a picture. Yeah, so send it to me. I'm going to attach it to this episode. Again, this is another reason why you should be watching it on YouTube is because we're going to show you the pictures. That way you have a visual story and we can kind of go through Europe with Jason, see his book, see the amazing things that Jason's doing. And hey, you're going to know his face because at the next show, <laughs> my bet is that he's going to be there. <laughs> yeah. well, he just pops up at venues. He's just like, I'm here. <laughs> That was like, it was yeah. like a, a game time decision 12 hours ago. I booked a flight and I'm here. <laughs> oh, that was, yeah, that, was that happens. It happens. That happens. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> Sometimes it's a great decision. Sometimes you're like, it's going to financially ruin me forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was kind of like Europe, but it's not, you know, you can't. Oh, here's the picture. Yeah, yeah. You can't. Well, this is the picture of the picture on the wall. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's like a little little character like a polaroid yeah but i don't know what that thing is it's like some. i don't know yeah. oh yeah the polaroid yeah 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 polaroid that's amazing sure. oh my this god a picture of that thing whatever <clears throat> it is i think it kind of reminds me of like the carnival you know like the carnival cruise they have like a little character and honestly that looks kind of yeah kinda similar it's, it's i don't know like, well, i don't know but uh it was such a just a great time here someone's holding the book in the picture you can see right look here. at that I had, oh my I had god just signed it yeah she, she was the one who gave me the uh the pen to the marker to sign it oh that's it was, amazing. It was such a great time it was oh like, yeah uh, this is a, this is just before I, you could see how high i was on this on that show because it was i had the set list my sign <laughs> and, and a pick you know it wow. was just like joy also you yeah, look yeah. amazing oh, in that picture I mean, I've never seen a bad picture of you. I've never actually seen you look bad, ever. So no. <laughs> another reason to look at YouTube, right? <laughs> Check it out. It must be time for a costume change. <laughs> Is it time for a costume change? <gasps> okay, here we go. And again, if you're not watching this on uh, YouTube, something's wrong. You yeah. should be watching this. I put on my papa hat because I just talked about my dog. Oh, I could talk about that. 
Oh, so while, while she's I'm changing. Sleeping, <laughs> yeah. This is my dog. His name is Disco. He plays me in this true story. He's my literal real dog. He's in the other room whining if you hear him. And that's my grandfather, Poppy, who is in heaven. Oh, we're breaking free for it. We're breaking free and we're so damn lucky to be doing so. Boom. <laughs> hey, oh wait, oh wait, hold on. Look, this thing. Um, oh yeah. It turns on. Is that light up or something? Hell yeah, dude. Well, it did. <laughs> it's been in store for a little bit. It's gone. Follow my dog on Instagram. Oh, look at that. At oh, my Disco God. Oh, Official. yeah, Disco. And you can yes. see him ever since, he was, ever since he was a puppy until now. Oh, my God. Oh, you post so many great pictures of him. And Wait, and he has his own. Questions. Oh, sorry. He has his own Instagram, right? Instagram. Your dog? Yeah. Okay, that's, that's his, in, that's his Instagram, not yours. Okay, confused. Got it. This is a song I wrote that you can scan at the back of the book. And then there's some questions to help you to really address this topic. And, you know, it kind of flows with the end of the book. And then you can see me as a child with my grandfather. Oh, my God. That's just so yeah. sweet. You did you did such a good job of putting it together. And I know that it was probably just therapeutic in general for you writing it and putting it together. Did that kind of, you, you feel like just even that process of putting the book together helped, helped in the healing that is grief? I would say for sure. You know, I ne the, the truth is I never told this story before I released the book. Nobody mm -hmm. knew the story and wow. uh, except for, the, the, the editor and I shared it with my brother just as a kind of get some feedback and he loved it. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, um, I haven't gotten bad feedback yet. Luckily, no, you're not, not going to, you're not going to. And if you do, and if you do get feedback, let me know. Cause I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna write an email, sir, ma'am, let me educate you on the importance of learning about grief. Um, because there's like statistical data out there that will prove you wrong. Like it is proven that people have to grieve. They, they have to be, and honestly, people that have a support system grieve, not, it's just different. It's, 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 it's almost better. I'll say it. It's, it's probably better to have a support system around you. And sometimes that's not your family. Sometimes that's support groups. That's grief groups. There's just so many resources out there for people. So, you know, sometimes I think sometimes, yes, it's just a, sometimes know, it's sometimes a book. It's, have to look. Yeah. Sometimes it's a book. Sometimes it's a song. I mean, obviously why we listen to Dave Matthews, you know, it's like there's over 30 references of songs in his book because this man has, you know, infused my yes. life with, you know, yes. give it a try, keep going, shine your light while you got one, mm -hmm. you know, you never know. And dream, the, little darling, dream. Yeah, thank you. I am and I'm doing and, uh, Do it. and I hope you guys are too, you know, everybody out there because without dreaming and all that shit, we're going to lose sight of what's important in this world. Amen. Real quick, you know, we got to stick together. We got to, we got to, it's the only way. Love is the only way. And I know that you are known for love, but more than just love, more love. So, you know, if you, if this is the first time hearing this podcast, seeing this podcast, however you're, however you're running into it, Jason is known for a sign and tell us a little bit of history when it comes to that sign. This sign, well, that's the newest sticker that I put on the back that I got in Europe. Uh, but all these are to help cover the cardboard box that it was in <laughs> It's and, falling uh, apart. But this sign has been held up at every concert except for two now. Uh, since 2010, when after Leroy died, um, it's something I've held up in his honor. And, you know, I've kind of brought a sign out of retirement uh, since they got inducted into the Hall of mm. Rock and Roll Hall. Of Show us. That said, forevermore. Yes. That, that had a moment with Jeff in the Dublin show. He pointed right at me, and I pointed right back at him. No. Oh, and that was pretty oh, fun. I love and, that. Uh, yeah, it was a good moment. And uh, yeah. you know, Dave pointed at my more love sign uh, during after what would you say in Paris? So <laughs> that was a special moment. I mean, yeah. I mean, it'll be like it's burned into your brain. You'll never forget it. Plus, well, you know, like well, a lot of people pillow. were there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, be kind. It's like this pillow. Be kind. Such a simple, such a I simple concept, yet it's and... so, so hard. It's not. We just forget. That's right. 
I mean, it's not hard. People just think it's hard. They assume yeah. it's hard. They don't want to do like, it. They don't want to put in the work. Remember that. You know, you might not, yeah, or that you might not get a thank you for what you did. You know, you might not you be might not getting, getting, you know, please can you hold the door or, uh, you know, hey, I need help. You're not going to necessarily get it, but if you be kind, it doesn't matter. What you, you yeah. Did. You, you know what I often think you. about, though? I, I try to remember, and maybe it's the nurse in me, maybe it's the empathetic in me. I, I don't know what it is, but... Uh, I, I, I often remember that there are people in different houses, families, atmospheres where kindness was never shown to them. And so learning about people that love and care, that is a foreign concept to them. So do you have any advice or like, what would you say to someone that like is almost fearful of how kind you are, how others are, because, you know, it, it's always been a scam to them and people have never shown them love. Like how, how do you teach someone to accept that? That's I'm gonna, tough. I'm going to. Be as honest. As, I'm going to be as honest as I can in my experience of life and my three years in therapy. You have to learn to trust yourself first, because your intuition, your intuition, your spidey sense, whatever you want to call it, would tell you what to do. It would infer. So you have to be willing to trust yourself and trust those feelings, and to be able to trust yourself to act on that experience that you're having. Mm -hmm to either walk away or choose something different than you might normally not think of. Yeah. Because you're reacting out of fear rather than from a place of, I know that I can trust myself. Myself is telling me to do X, Y, and Z, and I'm going to do that according to myself. Because mm -hmm. in the end, that's all you got is you. That's right. You know, we're all in this together, but in right, the right, end, right. all you got is the relationship to you and, and whatever is after this. So um, to be kind yeah. is yeah. is being kind to to yourself by being kind to others because it'll yeah. always come back to you. You have to love yourself. And that's that's honestly that's a super hard like lesson. It's it's hard to love yourself. I mean, sometimes like cuz we are often the ones that find every little fault that no one else sees, right? But because we're mm -hmm. in our skin, because that's all we have, we just pick ourselves apart and we tear ourselves apart. And so, you know, how how do you, and I didn't mean for this to turn into a therapy, you know, but hey, here we are. We're talking about grief, we're talking about feelings, and those are things that are okay to talk about and I think it needs to be talked about more. But like yeah. Uh, you know, what well, would be talk about? Um, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was gonna say, this is what I talk about on my high little guy channel on YouTube. You know, it's philosophical things, and I'm about to launch season two. Hey, uh, I haven't done anything yet, but it's in the works, you know. And, um, you know, it's like, why are we here, and what are we, and what are we about, and how come sometimes. We feel like we're pulled in this direction when we want to go in that direction. Yeah. So it's really like getting back to who we are as human being, having a human experience as a, you know, a, a, a energy, whatever you want to call it, a yeah. soul, a spirit. You, they all work. And There's here's no a here's answer there. I think this keeps popping and, uh, up in my brain. I think people are yeah. scared to talk about these things because a lot of us do come from very different, you know, backgrounds, religions, cultures, ethn ethnicity. Uh, and so it's like, well, why would I talk to you about that when maybe I don't think that our beliefs line up or, or but you know, you do have to learn to work I with others in general, no matter what their background, no matter what their religion is, no matter what their skin color is, you have to just love. That is the end. It doesn't matter. You believe what you want to believe. You, 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 your heart is your, your heart and no one else's, but we do have to love each other. We have to, it's the only way it works. And I think that's why it's not working it's not is there's so much hate. It's not that we have to, we actually do love each other. Yeah. You know, my experience in Paris and my experience in England and my experience in Ireland a couple of weeks ago, was no, I I mean, I happened to walk into a protest, a pro-Palestinian protest with police, bar you know, in, in um, riot gear in the middle. And I stood in the middle of it for 10, 20 minutes holding a peace <coughs> sign, you know, mm -hmm. just trying to like 
say my piece where it's like they're trying to say we need to stay. The police are saying, don't be uh, get out of line. And I'm just saying, let's just keep it real, people. You know, like we're in the, you know, like no one is really at odds with each other. This is all, in my opinion, governments fighting over whatever power they think they're fighting over, whatever money they think they're fighting over. And that's all it is. Because in general, everybody else that I've come in contact with you with is a loving human being. And all we want is for everyone to have a good time, get along, live as long as we can, and enjoy life. Yeah. You know, the rest is kind of bullshit. Let's call yeah. It I mean, I'll be the first to say I don't know a lot about a lot of things. Uh, and these are questions that I don't I don't know the answers to. And I, I mean, I don't think Jason does, you know, but it's it's okay to talk about these things. And it's okay. It's just okay to talk about differences and hard subjects because conversation and talking and communication is honestly key when it comes to so much. But that's just part of love and respect. I think those are just parts of love and respect is communication. And so, you know, we don't know the answers and we don't have a platform and, you know, none of those crazy things. We're just talking. We're just having open dialogue yeah. here. But No, I appreciate it. But I also have to acknowledge that there are people, including myself, that have been afraid to speak out. Mm -hmm, and part mm -hmm. of that is the condition of the world at the moment where it's like, if you say anything that's kind of out of line, most likely you're going to be criticized. It's not yeah. going to be embraced with open arms like you would have had it in maybe the 80s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there, there is a different sounding board than there was in the 80s if that makes yeah. any sense you know yeah. you know you could say i hurt my toe and someone would be like oh do you need a band-aid now it'd be like you sucker what the f you know you, yeah you, whatever or they'd make a youtube video out of it or a tiktok video You're right so it's like the the meaning of connecting sometimes has changed you know mm -hmm. and, and that's a, a, I know we're a bit far off topic. But like, <laughs> it's like Dave Matthews, who, what? <laughs> no, but the, no, these are their conversations that I think even the band talks about, right? Like I'll loving and even the music says. That's why there's some of the songs that he's a very dark thinker sometimes. And I love mm -hmm. that about him because I am the same way. And for the people that are afraid to say something, that's why I'm saying I'm working on trusting myself. I'm working on learning to listen mm -hmm. to my intuition when, you know, something says that. Ah, you know, yeah. like I wanted to go to West Palm Beach and sell my book in the parking lot. It just didn't work out in the cards. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I think yeah. people want to hear about it and know what it's about. They like it. They want to buy it. Not right. because it's I'm trying to sell them something. It's because they could identify with the story. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's what that makes common, it awesome. That's what makes yeah, you exactly. awesome. <laughs> it's like what that's common bond that I'm trying to we need to bring back. That's the mm -hmm. you know, like we're all we all I might not be dealing with someone being bombed, but it's on my mind every single day because I'm sitting here doing my thing and, you know, someone's running for their life in Gaza. You know, like mm -hmm. there's the duality of how funny the way it is. It's a quote of Dave Madden's mm -hmm. song. <laughs> yeah, you no, know? it is. Like, it's I crazy. I think about that all the time. I think about, I'll be honest with you. I honestly have been thinking for the last few days, maybe months now, uh, weeks now, like, what sign can I go hold up in the corner of Highland and Ho Hollywood Boulevard where I always seem to, or Sunset Boulevard, where I always seem to go, because I used to live over there, and just, like, hold up. And, like, you know, it's like, remember we're human, or, mm -hmm. you know, drop love bombs or something. You know, like, I don't right, know. Right, right, right. Today, my thought was, we are love. We are all, yeah. we all made of love, you know? Like, yeah. you got to remember that, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. And sometimes, you know, you get into a dark, dark, dark place where I've been and it's like, mm, it me too. Lord Jesus, that is what this whole podcast was born out of was in, in many ways I say, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to talk about me here, but you know, I, if you've listened to this podcast, then <laughs> back in season one, when I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, but I did it because I needed an escape from whatever my demons were at that time, because I had literally gotten to a point 
that I was thinking that I didn't want to live anymore. Now, this is coming from the happy peppy girl that you see in front of you all the time. Yes, in 2022, I did not want to live anymore. And this is what this podcast has done. It allowed me to have a voice and something I love, a passion to chase, even though the crazy thing was, and I think it's important to remember this and say this often, from the outside, uh-uh, he would have never picked up on it. I have an amazing husband. I have amazing children who are succeeding in every way. And career-wise, I was succeeding, but it didn't matter. It didn't matter. And your life is, you know, it might be all these perfect things. You can never tell when someone's going down. And I had gone downhill. Uh, you have to remember my profession, too, nursing just finished up COVID, all that needs to be in consideration because all those things are kind of what had done it. But, you know, everybody's got something. And I say that just to, to speak to anyone that might be listening, man, <laughs> it happens to everybody. And it can be a dark hole and coming out of it's scary, but you got to have a support system. And thank God I did. And I know, Jason, you're creating a support system about grief, about loss, all these things that can really, really cause someone else to spiral out and find themselves in the pits of hell. And so, you know, thank you so much for what you're continuing to do because it's, it's needed, man. There's so much grief out there just in every way, in every way. My pleasure. Yeah. You know, it's like to get back to your earlier question, it's like it was very cathartic for me. And the minute I wrote it and, you know, because I like I said, I never told the story in 45 years, maybe 35 years. Um, and when I finished it, I knew it was done. I knew it was the way I wanted it to be. And I remember mm -hmm. the editor going, is this how you want it? And I was confident. I was like, yeah, that's exactly how I want it to be. There wasn't a word the way I wouldn't want it. I put in probably too many commas. I don't know. My, my, <laughs> yeah. my English teacher taught me uh, <laughs> when I read the knowledge in the book. That's she me too. Like, you should send this to me before. And I was like, I get it. I get it. You know, it's my first <laughs> book. Told, yes. Know, but it's like, it really is told from a nine-year-old perspective. Mm -hmm. for how I felt at the time that I couldn't talk about. And so now yeah. this story doesn't belong to me anymore. It does belong to the world. And if people can, you know, grab a part of it and get on and read it. And, you know, if you're a Dave Matthews fan, of course, you're going to laugh at some of the jokes I put in it yeah. um, that are Dave Matthews songs. Um, but, you know, it's, it's more important that you talk about what you can't, you think you can't talk about. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the, that's the important part. Yeah. Talking. I mean, again, that wraps back to communication is key. I mean, man, it is, man. It's a lonely world to live inside your head. So communication is definitely key. Well, you yes, know what? I think it's, I think it's a really good time to do another outfit change. What do you think? I was just going to say the same. I feel like we need a break from the tension. Here we go. Let's, 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 let's do a little bit of outfit change. I'll be right back. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see all this uh, craziness. But if you're just listening to this, you know, Jason, sing for them while we're changing. <laughs> uh, I have to sing for them now? That's all right, something. let me get my geek here. Help me. Help uh, okay. me. <laughs> I don't know if my voice can handle it. I will show a point out a few things. Um. So this is where the story takes place. It's in Rebirth. And uh, as you can see, it says the Doberman family trip to Brooklyn. Uh, I don't even remember what I wrote. Was always long and never fun. Leave me to read it. And, um, you know, it really was that. It was always long. And this is like literally, I. this is literally what my mother told me to say. She's like, I wouldn't say that. I would say this. So I literally wrote what she'd say because I said, Pa, this goes uh, on my side of the car. That's, that's my brother. Uh, and it says, but Ma, Crash is, is uh, hitting me. Because my brother's Crash. And that's his so. And my mother uh, says, boys, calm down I'll, and sit still. We're almost there. And that is literally verbatim what she would say. And then we get to Grandma's house and Grandpa's house. And... Uh, It'll bring us to our first Dave Matthews uh, photo, at least, in the hands uh, thing. If you look here on this sweater here, it says Granny, and that's my grandmama. That's so sweet. I love it. Yeah. And whoever the uh, drawer was, or <laughs> the drawer, <laughs> what do you call it? Uh, yeah, the illustrator. Illustrator. Oh, my gosh. Illustrator. Yes, Renee. I'm so <laughs> ridiculous all of the time. Yeah. The and this is, this is a picture foreshadowing a different reference in the book later on. 
It looks like two turntables. Uh, yeah, we, I know that's we, not what it is, but I can't tell. Uh, no, it is. My, it's my grandmother is washing dishes because she was always oh, at, in the kitchen. Oh, my God, yes. Yes, yes, yes. And we were just dancing to music in the other room, but it, they put it in the same room. And because I didn't spend more money, it's in the same room. <laughs> Dude, it still looks amazing, though. Yeah, it was great. And, uh, you know, so that's uh, that's the first picture Dave Matthews referenced in the book. I love that. It's so cute. I mean, I bought it right away because, like, you know, I, I appreciate the topic. If we can see Crash is the first song reference. Crash? Where have we heard that? Gosh. Hmm. Doesn't sound familiar. <laughs> I don't... <laughs> what is that yeah. you speak of? That Crashing was... your car? That's yeah. what you did in Europe. <laughs> oh, God. That was it's terrible. terrible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ironically, ironically, when my, my first license plate in New York said crash into me. C-R-S-H-N to me. How cute. I love... I, I have... Uh, what do I have on mine? It's... um. 41 DMB, and I didn't want to do DMB 41 because then it looks like dumb 41. So I was like, nope, 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 <laughs> 41 DMB. Right. But then I guess that's 41 dumb, but whatever, whatever. Yes, if you if you funny. get it, you get it, and you're like, cool, yeah. and we can be friends. If you think it's dumb, get out. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> I, still, I still get made fun of this to this day. I will mind you. Um, the license plate I had after crash into me because everyone was like, why do you want everyone to crash into you? Why don't you change it? So oh I my God. In, yes. <laughs> and, I, and I, and I put DMB crazy and everyone thought it said dumb and crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you people don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. <laughs> yeah. I still get made fun of that to this day. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best ever. <laughs> dumb and crazy. <laughs> Yeah, DMB crazy. Yeah. I, I thought it. I was so being, good. I, was, I thought I was being inventive. Uh, no. Nope. You and were cool I, every I, time you went to a Dave concert, though. They were like that. I like it. Nice. And they finally got it. Somebody got it finally. And then I changed it to some devil, but S, uh, like the way to make it actually say some devil was to do S U M and then D E V L. I think I had it. Uh huh. And everyone thought I was an accountant because it said some devil. Oh, like SEM. Okay, got it. That makes sense. Just can't know, get across I, to everybody. Not everybody's meant to like Dave, and that's cool. As I, 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 I get I, it, get I, it. I, if I could back in here in Los Angeles where I live, if I can go back and do a crash into me, I totally would. I've seen so many clever ones. You know, like that's a whole page on Facebook is DMB car plates or something like that i can't remember what the exact name is but it's so like there's so many clever ones out there and i'll see them and i'm like oh god how long did it take them to think of that like i couldn't right. come up with anything i was like okay i need five letters yeah. what's it gonna be and i was like easy dmb 41 or 41 dmb like boom actually i, I wanted joyride and that was taken in the state of arkansas <laughs> boo that's what i wanted and then I tried some others, but they get taken. And then, you know, there's yeah. people in your state that get it. Or Joyride could have been anything in the whole world, though. <laughs> could have been some 80-year-old's yeah, Corvette. <laughs> yeah, having a, you know, a hot flash Just, in the middle of yeah. the night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, well, listen, I, 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 I am so – what does your cup say? Tell me. <laughs> Please tell me. Oh, this one? Yeah. That's for my dog. Oh, oh, of course. Disco gave that to you for Father's Day. I love it. Did, two years ago. <laughs> so, Jason, will uh, if you know we're we're headed into Texas. I will be yeah. in Texas. So, if you're listening to this and you're going to be at the Texas shows, definitely check me out on social media. I will be doing a night zero party in Houston or the Woodlands. I'll also be doing a day of pre meet. I'm co-hosting all of these with some amazing fans who put these parties together, and I just show up, and it's amazing. So, thank you. <laughs> It's been a lot of fun and I just can't thank y'all enough for like inviting me to be at these meetups. There's not a meetup in Dallas just simply because like it's literally like the next day and you have to drive from the Woodlands to Dallas. And so it Dallas is a huge tailgating. That is what happens there because there's no time for the parties. You just get there, you tailgate and like you get ready for the show. So guys, if you're going to be I'm at the fine. Woodlands fine. or Dallas, check me out. Dallas is where we met last year, Jason. I saw that parking lot's always going to have a special place in my heart. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I love that. I'll be thinking about you. Pictures, you know, 
let's put that up for everybody, shall we? Do you have it still? If you don't, I can. It is a great picture. I don't know. And it's okay. Here's what's amazing to me. The fact that I even look half that decent after a concert because usually i'm just like busting a move you know like all night long and i'm sweaty no, this like was just before gross was in. oh i was wearing oh party. hell yeah oh uh, <laughs> look at you no i'm telling you was that not after the concert no it was before because then you found me in the pit but i oh think God. that was i don't even remember it's been so it's been yeah. so long ago a whole year I, my lord I wouldn't and, have known me had we not met in the parking lot you would have not, no. not known who i was. well i mean i would have eventually would, met you because we were just destined to be friends that's just the end of that i agree i agree <laughs> some people are just I gonna agree. meet and sometimes it takes a dave matthews band concert and i'm so excited for the next you know, uh person that i get to meet yeah for sure i i, I sometimes joke that i put my retirement in the dave matthews band Oh, yeah. It's just like it's not only that I've seen so many shows, you know, but uh, it's like you invest in this community of people that are just such amazing, awesome people, and it's like, yeah, we ain't gonna let the party stop. No, 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 man, it's it's so good, it's so crazy. It's like I think about just you know my liking the Dave Matthews band and like how it's always kind of been apart, but like it wasn't even. It wasn't even what it was going to grow to be like just the the journey with the band for me it's just, i look back and i'm like what what is that like what is happening and i can't believe it every day and that's like part of the thrill is like it just keeps going and it's it keeps getting better for me like because it's more than just the music it's the people around it and like the things that i've got to do because of this band and because of the fans like i'm just I'm like forever grateful. And I, I, I say this all the time. We're going to need those grief and support groups because that kind of stuff for real happens even at the loss of music. You know, when this band is done, I'm telling you right now, I'm going to be right here going, y'all, let's talk about it. Let's talk about the good times. Let's talk. Cause that's all we're going to have. That's all we're going to have. And so just enjoy it while we can, man. I'm so excited to even be doing this. I'm so excited to get to see them and I hope it lasts for a whole lot longer. Well, I wish you uh, are able to do what you're doing for as long as I've been following this band, which in September will be 29 years, if you can imagine that. <laughs> I can't. Almost That's crazy. It's so long. September 1st, 2025, it'll be 30 years of following a band. Wow. Wow. I mean, it just sounds Eight, wild, but also, oof, what a blessing. Gosh. Yes. What a, oh. shows later. So wild. And uh, so wild. I feel closer to this band than I have when I saw them first. So, yeah, I, I mean, I thank oh. you for the platform that you uh, provide, and I uh, love your friendship, and I look forward to the future. Yes, man. Thank you. Well, we know you're always invited back. I would love to have you back after the 2024 tour wraps up. I don't know the future. Is there going to be something in the fall and the winter? I don't, I don't know. That's what keeps us, you know, you coming back for more. Like you know, well, you know, I, I keep saying this. I'm like, I love Dave and I want to sit around the bonfire and like have some s'mores and stuff. But like, I don't want to interview him. Like, I just want to chill with him. But my yeah, job is to document the story of the fans because dudes, that's a story worth sharing that's a story worth remembering and i think the band knows i do i think the band knows but even if they don't the world needs to know because this is an amazing thing and i just hope to continue to document the story of the fans yeah well thanks for doing so and thanks for allowing me to talk about my european experience and the book that's being embraced by uh the dave community i so love yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. So definitely, where are some places, if someone's listening to this or watching this right now on YouTube, what are some ways that they can buy this book? Can they get it digitally? Does it have to be paperback? Do you got hardback? Like, what you got going on? Sure. It's uh, available on digitally on Kindle or Amazon.com uh, or whatever. And it's available in paperback both on Amazon and on BarnesandNobles.com. Awesome. At the moment, that's where it's available. Yeah. And it's super and, affordable. Uh, super affordable. Yeah. It's only, yeah, it's only like 1098 or something. It's like 11 bucks. There are even people that have reached out to me to get an autograph copy. If that's something you're interested in, you know, you can find me at the high little guy on Instagram or on Facebook at my name, Jason Dombrow. Uh, you can see on the screen, it says my name. That's D-O-M-B-R-O-W for those listening on a podcast. 
Oh my gosh. Yeah, um, I remember <laughs> your name was so hard for me to remember. Back to the full moon uh, fever Tom Petty album where he's like, you know, we've reached the point of the record where the those that listen on CD have to turn over the tape and those that are listening on CD can still. We're there. There's We're there. Pause for that. This is that. <laughs> <laughs> We're there. Stop. Stop. <laughs> All right. We'll do podcast anyway so yeah no, cool. uh, or you know email me it's uh jason dombra books at gmail.com yes. sounds and spells. you definitely even if you do not think that this is a book for you i bet you know somebody that could benefit from the gift of this book and for ten dollars definitely order a couple order a couple of them stick them away i mean man you just you can't help anyone else especially if you think about children and and you know man it's a good thing so definitely check it out jason thank you so much for being on the show like i said be sure to follow us on all the socials available on facebook instagram tiktok whatever whatever you want i got it so definitely be sure to subscribe to all the things that you, what you want i got it no i don't yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Hold on. Let me get that answer for you. That's what we tell our nursing students to say. I don't know the answer. It's hold on. Let me get that answer for you. <laughs> Dudes, be sure to stay tuned. Keep watching. And in the meantime, peace, love, and Dave Matthews fans. Amen. <laughs>